welcome back to the show once again. Today we are going to be looking at a 2008 F-150's 5.4 liter three valve engine that kind of self-destructed. Now what happened on it is the thrust washer failed and the, the crankshaft just started moving around in there. It lost oil pressure and of course started just chewing into everything it shouldn't be chewing into that the thrust washer keeps it in check and away from, okay? Um, so this is very common for some reason on the 2007 especially, but into 08 uh, model years F-150 with the 5.4 liter three valve engine. Now what we're gonna do today is we're gonna just show you the destruction because I know you guys love to see that kind of stuff, but we're also gonna give you some specs on crankshaft end play, what it looks like, what to watch out for, especially if you're going in here to do a timing job, you're trying to refresh the engine, and maybe you have 180,000 miles on it, look at these different items I'm gonna show you today before you sink that kind of money into it. If the thrust washer's gone and everything's touching inside of there, you might as well either rebuild it yourself if you have the experience and the ability, or uh, reman, reman all the way, and just put an all new engine in there. Because, forget this, these have cam cap issues also because there's no bearings up there, uh, wear issues. Uh, so, you might as well just throw a reman engine in there and make it new. Let's get to it. Okay, so first off, what is crankshaft end play? Well, it's the amount of lateral movement within the cylinder block. So the crankshaft designed to walk back and forth just a little bit. The spec on these is 3 thousandths to a max of 14 thousandths of end play. Now the reason for that is you want it to get, you know, be kind of loose in there, move around a little bit, everything kind of self-adjusts, but you don't want it to go outside those limits because then, you know, like the counterweights will start grinding into the main caps. Uh, like this one, the tone ring grinding into the front cover. You start having oil pressure loss issues from the bearings being offset even more so than usual when they spill over. You'll have rear main seal leaks, front crank seal leaks. You'll have all kinds of issues because the crank is walking back and forth way, way too much. You can even have broken flex plates on automatic transmissions. Um, there's all kinds of issues that can happen and that's why they use thrust washers or thrust caps or thrust bearings to keep it in check within that specified uh, amount of tolerance. So you can check for this before you ever pull the engine out of the vehicle. You can just get underneath the vehicle and I'm gonna show you how. Okay, here's a real easy pre-check you can use to see if there's any obvious crankshaft end play issues. You're simply going to open your hood get a good flashlight, and then look down at your crankshaft dampener right here. It's right next to the tensioner pulley right here and your water pump pulley that's just above it. Now what you're looking for is the amount of gap that is right here between the back flange of the dampener and your front cover. It should look like it's very, very close, almost too close, almost touching. That is the way it should look. By comparison, when the crankshaft has walked out, or gotten stuck out, like on this one, it'll look a little something like this. That right there. Now it's not a big difference, but you can easily tell the difference. It doesn't look so much like it's almost touching anymore. Also, another real easy check that's gonna be obvious is the belt's gonna come up and go over your tensioner pulley right here, right? Well, you're gonna notice it's way off. It's sticking way out and almost falling off this pulley. It's not centered in it. That's another obvious indication that everything is not lining up, okay? Now, once you identify something like this, we can go under the vehicle, we can do another test with the pry bar that's gonna give you a real good idea if you need to bust out a dial indicator and go any further with this check. Here's another test that is done from underneath the vehicle. Again, nothing has to come apart. Just as the vehicle is parked in your driveway, you can get underneath there and do this. What you're gonna do initially is get underneath there, locate the crankshaft dampener right here, and then right across here is gonna be your front cross member for the frame. What you wanna use is a medium to large pry bar. You're gonna go against that uh, cross member and you're gonna pry onto the face of the dampener here. What that's gonna do is that's gonna put pressure this way and push the crank as far into the block as possible. And then you're gonna take that same pry bar 
and you're gonna get underneath this relief right here and you're gonna pry. And that's gonna give us our, our movement in the other direction and then you can you know physically see if there is movement in the crankshaft or not and they'll tell you if you need to get a dial indicator out and get a measurement. Now what I can tell you is that you get underneath there, you should not get any detectable movement, not like this. Yeah, that's a lot of movement from this crankshaft. I have not measured it yet, we're gonna measure it here together in a second, but I'm guessing it's around 30 thousandths or so. Now this is what you should get. You get underneath there, you push it all the way back, get your pry bar in there, and you get this. You see us moving just a little bit like that, and that relaxes back down. That's just the rubberized section that's, that mates the inner and outer part of this pulley that's kind of giving and relaxing, giving and relaxing, okay? See that? That is perfectly fine. That passes the test. And believe me, I know the spec on here is 3 thousandths to 14 thousandths, but that is how it should be. Everyone that I test that has passed, that has not had any problems, that is how it is. A little bit, gives just a little bit and relaxes. It definitely does not move. Like that. You see that? That's obvious, you know? And at that point you can get a measurement, but anyone that's gonna pass, you don't even need a measurement. If it moves, it's done for, okay? Now on this one, it did throw me for a second there because the crankshaft had no end plate to it. But I noticed the crankshaft dampener was sticking way too far out. The belt was not tracking on the tensioner pulley and I knew something was wrong. I knew 07s, 08s had this thrust washer issue and I pulled the pan and it was just very obvious at that point just to verify for the customer. Let's go over and get an actual measurement on here just for the heck of it um, and I'll show you guys how to get it set up on here to take a measurement even in vehicle. Okay, now measuring crankshaft end play in vehicle, especially in the 543 valve with the uh, fan shroud in the way and the fan is a little difficult, but it is possible, I've done it before. Um, what I use is this kit right here uh, from Central, the Storm brand, um, that is flexible. It's made for measuring uh, rotor run out on your brakes. Uh, so it's got a flexible arm and a, a vice grips over here. Uh, to attach it in more places than one underneath there. Since we're doing it on the bench here, we can easily uh, use a better dial indicator. And you wanna make sure that everything is nice and secure on here, everything's in place. And of course, we're as square and straight as possible onto the, uh, the bolt right here for the crankshaft. What you're gonna do is you're gonna zero it out with the crankshaft fully into the block. Okay, so we'll make sure it's into the block and we're pretty much zeroed out at that point once it relaxes, okay? And then once you do that, you're going to use that same spot on the side here and you're gonna pry up and then you're gonna allow it to relax. Let me let it relax, comes to 50. 50 thousandths of end play on this engine. You'll see why, you know now why it destroyed itself inside. I'll show you that here in a second. Now just to verify your measurement, because it can get skewed, these things are finicky, uh, you wanna go back to zero. Bring the crankshaft back into the block. Again, let it relax. We're just about at zero. Let's take that measurement again. Let it relax, we're at 50. So just about 50 thousandths end play. All right, enough measuring. Let's go inside the engine so I can show you what fails and what happens when it does fail. All right, let's take a look inside. Now, one of the first things that I noticed is this crankshaft trigger wheel for the crankshaft sensor was so far forward that I started digging into the front cover there. Wow. And this one is definitely extreme being 50 thousandths out. But also these, uh, the crankshaft counterweights there, you see them, they were so far forward they were digging into the main caps all the way along. So there's tons of damage in here. And then down here is cap number five. That's the one that houses the crankshaft thrust washer. So we're gonna pull it one off and let you guys see how it fails and just, just takes out everything. 
Now, if you get into your vehicle and you pull the oil pan, you wanna take a look at this, you wanna see the destruction, you wanna know for sure. Well, if you go into this cap right here to pull it off to look, what you're gonna to need to do is pull out the bolts on the side of the block, okay? And then get these pins out of here. They look a little something like this, okay? They're in there, and then these bolts are going through them into the main cap. You need to get all that out of there because it won't clear the rear cover here. Once those are out, we can go ahead and just zip these out. 13 mil and we'll be able to get the cap out of the way and check on a thrust washer. Get our pry bar in here, this one's done anyways. And we'll just get it moving, and then right here there's a ridge um, you can start grabbing onto. You wanna just kinda take it out there evenly, and it shouldn't be too hard to get out like that, right there. Now, the main cap itself is, you know, look, looks fine. You know, there's no damage to it. This back side is gonna have uh, the one part of the thrust washer on the back side has upper and lower, uh, whereas the front side is, has an upper. So you can see the back side here, right there. Has a little bit of damage to it, no big deal. Now, yeah, once you get inside of here, which I'll pull you guys in closer, um, you see the real damage. Let's bring you down, and there she is. Yes. So this right here, down in here, that's starting to come up and all that, that is the rear main seal, and that is where we're getting our rear main leak because it's so far forward on there. Um, but this right here, believe it or not, is the rear upper and lower thrust washer. These should be spun around up into the block. So one sits up in there, half moon shape, and the other one comes down here. Whereas this one for the front um, thrust washer just stays up in the block. Okay, so I'll try to pop that one out. You should be able to just poke it and it'll spin around and let you guys see that and see how they look. Now again, the, the point is, about this, you may say, well, let's just change rear main seal and put a new thrust washer in there and shine it up. Well, check this out. You're in for a full rebuild. I mean, everything's just coming apart on here. This is a two-piece thrust washer, and this is normal uh, for them to come out like this. But look at this, this main bearing. Let me see if I can show you guys. Yeah. It's hard to see. There's a lot of pitting and spalling on here. You can see it right there. See it? Right there. Come on, guy. There you go. Look at that. Yeah, the main bearings are done too anyways. It doesn't really freaking matter, does it? Now you can see the journal on the crankshaft is just fine. Um, but again, the bearings, you're in for a full rebuild if this happens, if you're going to go that route. Don't just change the thrust washer. Now, if this one's really mangled, you can see it's bent over. It should be flat and straight, and it's so bad. Um, I might not be able to get it out. That's because the crank just walks so much. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was a beautiful, nice looking thrust washer before and now it's done for it is freaking done for and this is the back one that took the hit failed and it's done for I'm gonna try to get this upper one out of here because it gives you a better idea what it should look like this one's basically undamaged um, and you can get a better idea from there there it's pushing out there there we go now, like I said, this one's just an upper on, on the front side here, but this is how it should look. This one has a little bit of wear to it. Okay, no problems. This is how it should look. And these go with the oil uh, control ridges right here facing the crankshaft, same thing over here. So they go in just like this. And then you just kind of hook it into there 
spin it, and then it goes up into the block. And that's how these ones should have been, okay? But you saw they were down here, they spun out of there. This whole thing in the back side of the crankshaft here, um, the ridge right here, that's damaged for sure. The journal's fine, uh, but this is damaged too. So, not a good situation. I hope you guys are not in this situation, but if you are, um, this is what's causing it, unfortunately. Now, of course, this right here with the thrust washer is just gone. That's an obvious failure. But once you drop the pan, you want to look inside the pan too to check for any kind of metal shavings and sparklies like you see in here. You see it's all sparkly in there. And then it gets this gray, oily, thick oil looking stuff going on. And that's from all the really fine metal that just gets trapped in the oil and becomes like a thick substance inside of there. Now this one, because those counterweights were getting jammed against the main caps, they were just kind of twirling away in there and they were shredding uh, material off and that was getting trapped inside of here so you see all the little pieces in there shavings yeah what's over here nothing over here over here let me try to pull some of those off for you oh yeah it's been shaving for a while so yeah there's a lot going on inside of there and at this point it's just time to replace the engine and there you have it, another common failure on the 5.4 liter three valve engines. Now again, this applies to the 07, 08 model year. So if you own one or you think about buying one, maybe you should think again. I'll see you guys next time.